isn't easy. The American Family Association. On this fundamental issue, I will not yield, and Planned Parenthood will not yield. All the odds against us. Faithfulness is the word. My religion has uh, uh, compels me, and I love it for it, uh, to be against discrimination of any kind in our country. Our rights come from nature and God, not from government. All God asks of you is faithfulness, faithfulness, faithfulness. Fighting for the family, standing for the church, laboring to return to a moral and biblically based culture. This is the American Family Association at AFA Today. It's AFA Today on AFR Talk. And uh, we're coming to you from the belly of the news beast uh, here in lower Manhattan. Uh, if you're watching there, uh, Brooklyn Bridge on the uh, AFA channel, uh, that's uh, that's just outside my windows here, actually. Uh, but so glad to be with you. We're in the shadow of the Freedom Tower just north of Trinity Cemetery and directly across the street from the uh, Memorial Museum for 9-11 uh, here in New York. And um, Kevin McCullough is my name, 888-589-8840, uh, 888-589-8840. Mississippi, what happened to you last night, and why, 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 why on earth does someone who purports to be for family values and wanting to do something good for the values-based voters of his state go and lie about his opponent, calling him a racist, calling, uh, doing all kinds of things that's just disgusting? I have the flyer that Thad Cochran's little thugs used right here. It's in my uh, crisp little hands today. I just saw this moments ago for the first time, but if this is what helped Thad Cochran win, Mississippi, you should be embarrassed today. Now, I'm not I'm not making the argument that if Thad Cochran wins that you vote for the other party come November because uh, whatever they're going to put forward, I'm almost certain is going to be uh, worse. But I don't I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why. Um, this type of grotesque, uh, bullying kind of politic uh, is what was used to uh, push um, basically people that disagree with you philosophically into the voting booth uh, to get you propped up for your uh, for your next step in the race. I don't know. Uh, it's uh, and maybe if you're in Mississippi and you've got some um, insight into this, you can explain to the nation uh, why. There was such a push to get liberals and people that are not going to vote with you. They're not going to vote with you in November. They're not going to vote for your party. They're not going to vote for the things that you believe in today. They did this because uh, they, they recognized that the other guy, Chris McDaniel, posed a much greater potential to change the outcome in the United States Senate, similar to a Ted Cruz or a Rand Paul, uh, but a younger guy, somebody that's not an establishment dude, someone that is not, uh, you know, on the take for the uh, for the establishment. And you had and you had in your grasp the chance to put somebody there that was going to be um, hopefully a little more principled, and you didn't do it, Mississippi. If you've got any any insight into this as to why please uh th this is what they said this is what went out on the flyer that uh that i'm again if you're watching on uh line or whatever the uh the, the flyer that went out in the some great photoshop on this thing too those thad cochran guys man they really know how to use that computer someday maybe they'll figure out the email thing you won't even have to send these out by hand but anyway um they said that uh chris mcdaniel voted against the mississippi civil rights museum does that make him a racist? The implication is it made him a racist. Is it racist to say maybe we shouldn't build something uh, if it uh, shouldn't be paid for by tax dollars when maybe private funding could be used to build it? Does it make it inherently racist to say that something shouldn't be funded by taxpayers? Thad Cochran thought so. Or his little, you know, uh, Tick biting fleas running around trying to run his campaign for him. I don't know if the senator himself knew about this flyer, but if he didn't, that's negligence on his part. But the the really bad problem here is you've got you've got really bad things being said about somebody that that Thad and Chris, I would hope on a personal level, would agree with each other about eighty percent, ninety percent of the time. Uh, 
said that Chris McDaniel opposes federal funding of public schools. I, something tells me that that's not exactly Chris McDaniel's uh, position on it, that maybe he's wanting the federal government to have much less of a role in public education. Uh, made racist comments on his radio show, but there's no evidence of what those comments were. Uh, it, it, it's just, it's really lowbrow, uh, you know, below the belt kind of politics for um, for someone who should be a senior voice uh, in the Republican Party uh, to be associating himself with. And I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what. Um, I don't know, Mississippi. Tell me. Tell me what you think happened. But I, you know, someone who's watching it from very, very far away. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know that you're in a good position to even win in November. And I would hope that you are. Uh, I, I don't want to see a Senate seat lost that should be maintained. But this is this is a very, um, I don't know, kind of surreal day today to know that basically bullying leftist progressive tactics were used by the establishment placeholder to squeak out a win anyway uh that's uh oh and and charlie Rangel did about the same in um, harlem last night those were the two big races to watch uh but there's a closer margin in new york and what they're actually going to do is they're going to uh, that, that there's about a 2,300 vote difference. There's about 6,000 early ballot, provisional ballot uh, count that needs to be accounted for. Um, doesn't take much uh, for Charlie Rangel to still lose that, but um, we'll see. We'll see what happens there. All right, here's something else I want to get to today, and uh, there's actually two headline stories. Uh, that I that I think are are fairly significant. CBS News has one up on their site right now. Uh, the Sunni militant group in Iraq, that's uh, f- a force of roughly three thousand strong, and uh, and includes some Americans. What? A senior intelligence official told CBS News on Tuesday, the majority of fighters in the group are ISIS, and they are of Iraqi or Syrian origin. In all, up to about 10,000 are fighting with the group, 3,000 in Iraq, another 7,000 in Syria. The intelligence official said between three and 5,000 are foreigners, though how many of those are in Iraq is difficult to, to assess. The fighters view Syria and Iraq as one battlefield and have been able to move swiftly inside with the help of local Sunnis. Uh, ties the intelligence official described as more of a relationship of convenience than a formal alliance. The official said the group, also known as the ISIL, uh, was well positioned to keep the territory that it has captured but would be stretched thin if it tried to push south into Baghdad. It has intentions to target U.S. interests, said the official. Huh? What did what the, what the intelligence official say? That the intent of these groups is to target U.S. interests. That's what our intelligence officials are telling us. Here's something else that I uh, just found out. By the way, my phone number is uh, 888-589-8840, 888-589-8840. Uh, the U.S. Intelligence Committee warned about a growing threat from the Sunni militants. Since the beginning of the year, said the senior U.S. intelligence official, a claim that challenges some assertions made by top administration officials that said they were caught off guard by the Iraqi struggle. Secretary of State John Kerry said, Nobody expected... Iraqi security forces to be decisively driven out by the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, as they were earlier this month in the second largest city in the country. But in a separate briefing with reporters Tuesday afternoon, intelligence officials were singing a very different song. Um, That senior intelligence official said the intelligence community 
was warning about ISIS for quite some time. During the past year, the intelligence community has provided strategic warning of Iraq's deteriorating security situation. We routinely, what does routinely mean? We routinely highlighted ISIS as an offshoot of al-Qaeda growing threat in Iraq, the increasing difficulties Iraq's security force faced in combating ISIS, and the political strains that were contributing to Iraq's declining stability. When asked who failed to act, the official declined an answer. Offering a grave warning about the current strength of the group, which is a State Department-designated terror organization, because they're from al-Qaeda, the official also said that barring a major counteroffensive, the intelligence community assesses that ISIS will be well positioned to keep the territory it has gained. The strike force is now between three and 5,000 members in Iraq. So let's think this through here for a second. Our intelligence people were telling the executive branch for a year that ISIS, which was on their radar screen, an offshoot of al-Qaeda, was uh, already starting to pose a danger and that they anticipated that they would begin to try to take territory in Syria and Iraq, uh, an area that they view as one region. Lo and behold, they go and do exactly what the intelligence officials said. But our executive branch did not take action. Our executive branch, no, over the course of the last year, like he has for the last uh, several years, insisted that we do nothing while we're there. That we, uh, we, 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 you know, guard our embassy. And without a major counteroffensive, the intelligence community assessing that ISIS is well positioned to keep the territory it has gained. What happened the last time uh, dangerous people that followed the leanings and teachings of what Al Qaeda believes took a territory and was well positioned to keep that territory for a long period of time? Oh, yes, in Afghanistan it happened. And what happened? Oh, yes, they attacked us on 9 11. Oh, yes, these same intelligence officials are saying to CBS News, uh, yes, the interests that the uh, strike forces are targeting uh, are intentioned to target U.S. interests. The leader of the group, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, rose through the ranks of the organization before becoming emir sometime in 2010-2011. The group relies on a handful of Senior decision makers, but uh, al-Baghdadi has the final word, according to the intelligence official. Most of its funding comes via robbery, extortion, smuggling, and a small percentage coming from donations. Well, that's great. Since they just robbed a bank in Mosul and got a half billion dollars, that ought to keep them flush for a little while. Pretty, pretty discouraging to think that our administration was being told by our intelligence people. And before you, you Bush haters start calling in going, hey, well, Bush knew about the, the, the bombing. And the, no, he didn't. Through his security briefings, he was told that a possible big attack was going to be launched. Nobody knew where specifically that threat was going to be materialized. So don't even, don't even go there today, friends. I'm not in the mood. We've got some significant problems on our hands, and we need to make some tough decisions about what we're going to do about them. And right now, the tre treachery that's being carried out against our own country by our own executive branch is pretty palpable. 888 uh, 589 888-589-8840. 888-589-8840. Had a brain cramp there for a second. Gavin McCullough coming back. This is AFA Today on AFR Talk.